you've been watching The Blacklist. Ooh. Yeah. Woo. Pretty amazing. I mean, I work for CBS, and I watch this show. So <laughs> this is really a good show. Um, this is a guest that's been here, I think, twice before. But the last time was a long time ago, and we've been after him for quite a while to get out here. You'll hear the story soon that he doesn't live here. So it's been a little hard to schedule his time. He's, he's truly a Nebraskan living in Kearney. So um, until now, uh, you know, it took a hit show on the air to get him to be here long enough that we could snag him for a salon. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce John Boken Cat. What's it like? What's it feel like having a hit show on the air? Um, it's very strange. It doesn't, it doesn't feel at all like a hit show is like a sort of week to week sort of thing. I'm not quite sure we're there yet, but uh, um, it's super exciting, but also just like completely in the trenches and not really aware of news and what's happening, let alone entertainment news, but just like yeah. feeling completely um, overwhelmed with the episodes and writing scripts. Yeah. The work. I'm not a fast writer, so it's, <laughs> it, um, that has sped up a lot. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It, it, wow. we, Thank we are so Thanks. happy that you're here tonight. Thank you. And Thank we get a chance to celebrate with you. What a big deal. It's fu when I think about this, it's funny. Like everyone's like, well, uh, a lot of times I talk to people. They're like, well, how did you get your agent, or what was the uh, what was the moment? And I met Todd. I I don't. How did we even meet? I, um, I came to your after sunset screening at the Car Museum. That's right. When you're not a motor museum, where I live yeah. two blocks away from now. Yeah, yeah. And but I met Todd, who found out was from Carney slash Holdridge, and. Um, he convinced me to enter a screenwriting competition, and it cost 45 bucks. And I was like, oh my god, how's this I remember what a struggle that was for you. Oh that my was god, a big deal. I was like, I, the But they just sent me the application, and I wasn't going to use it. And I was like, dude, you really should do it. I have read his script, and it was fantastic. It was so funny. And so anyway, so that's sort of the full circle thing that is so strange to me is that, you know, over on Manhattan Place, I think, right, is... Yep. Is like this entering the, this fade in screenwriting award thing, and actually like it's and the first thing I'd won. won since a ugly wow. tie he contest. He won. He got an agent and a lawyer out of this right. thing. Right. So there's and the they guy put him right on the there map, and they're to. still talking about it. They still have publicity about yeah. him yeah. being well, the winner. Of that update thing. the website. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty interesting because you know you started um, in in Carney and then came out to USC, yep. and then. Um, from that, I remember the first time I knew about you, my grandmother from Kearney was sending me an article about your movie uh, After Sunset. He made a documentary about the sort of culmination of the drive-in theater era. We sort of took this road trip around uh, the west, Nebraska west, um, using drive-ins as our map. And we stopped at all these funky drive-ins, camped at them, and talked to the owners about the um, their stories, you know, just of how they, why they loved movies, why they loved outdoor movies. See if you see a thread here. Taking Lives with Angelina Jolie, Perfect Strangers, and The Call, both with Halle Berry. I mean, some beautiful actresses that you've had the chance that's to work with. That's the key, with. yeah, that's the key, the lovely no, but I mean, ladies. I, I think there's something in, in all of your work that, that includes strong women. Totally, I mean, that's um, probably because of my wife. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm, uh, I don't know, I just feel like female characters in a thriller are just so much more interesting and complex. Like, totally. I'm not at all interested in the guy in the black jacket with the sunglasses and the gun and the stuff. I'm so much more interested in, I was gonna say the woman in the bathtub with the glass of wine, which sounds weirdly <laughs> sexual, it's not that. It's just like, just that, like, sort of a vulnerability, but a strength that you know um, is within so yeah it's a it's a I don't know it's interesting I don't know why I'm fascinated by that but I, th I just think it's a it's a especially in the show her vulnerability and trying to figure out who she is mm -hmm. is and, and and what the story is around her is is interesting you know sort of a chosen one kind of thing well and there's a lot of mystery built up I mean there there are so many unanswered questions right off the top so right 
Yeah, there's, I'm just curious. Like, I'm. T I honestly feel like. A, has it? Have you guys? Has anybody seen the show? Or you guys kind of know what? Yeah, I mean, you know, almost everybody here has seen well, it. it. I'm so used to sitting in my room alone, and I feel like right now. Well, let me tell you about my script. That's uh, you know, but it's so weird to me that people have have seen it and sort of understand where um, the character may be going. It is a very interesting and different uh, journey for a movie that would take six years to make, yeah. right? And maybe it gets made, maybe it doesn't get made, maybe it's a compromise way. And, and this, which um, just happens, and it's just, you've got to get it done, and you've got to just sort of go with your gut, in a way, and, right. and a very different animal, and, and more so different just in that um, you don't know how, it, I mean, you know how it's going to end because because you know certain temp you know certain temples that you want to hit along the way, but I, the first time I went and pitched a TV agent a show, I was like, here's the thing: when we get to the end, it's going to blow you away because you're never going to see this coming. And the guy was like, don't ever pitch an ending in TV again. And I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, TV <laughs> never ends. You know, TV just goes on right. and on. Right. And so it's hard to sort of reverse engineer and not think from a. Uh, a twist or a, an endpoint, but to sort of see it as an open-ended thing and, and, and a, a blank canvas in a way to follow the characters and see where they're going to go and not just do the mathematics of a plot. So that to me is super exciting and unusual and strange, you know, very different. It's so cool that you came here at the very beginning, and yeah. I want to catch you, oh, you know, end. after you've got a few seasons under your belt, so that you can come right. back and tell us how that is. But thank you so much for, for making you. this happen early on, because this is a glimpse inside that we've never had a chance to see before from well, a either creator of, I, so of a huge yeah. show like this. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, thank you guys. <laughs>